So we're going to talk about this uh, hydraulics behind our new high-rise package. Um, we've gone with a two-inch high-rise hose with an inch and an eighth tip, and we'll talk about why here in a second. But uh, all this starts at the standpipe. So standpipes in PFA's district, uh, there's going to be there can be a main standpipe or there can be a secondary standpipe. The main standpipe at the furthest discharge from the outlet on the FDC is designed to give you 500 GPM at 100 psi. If it's a secondary standpipe, it's going to give you the same pressure, but at 250 GPM. So why is this important? We want the fire pump to do the work. The fire pump is a designed part of this system. It's tested every year. We know they work. They're proven every year. So we want to use the building system. We don't have to provide all the pressure for the standpipe. But this ends up dictating what our line is. So in order for this to work correctly, we want our line to be at, near, or right around 100 PSI. That works in both scenarios. We want our GPM to be at, near, right around 250 um, to account for our secondary standpipe. Or if we put two lines on a 500 GPM standpipe, we're still underneath that 500 GPM. So that kind of goes into why we selected the line that we did. So that kind of leads us into um, hose line selection and nozzle selection. So um, nozzle selection is a no-brainer. We talked about it in the last eight-hour day. We talked about it in the DO manual. Um, fog nozzles are pretty much not to be used on a standpipe. Um, reason being, if debris gets caught into that fog nozzle, it's going to get completely clogged and gummed up. A smoothbore nozzle is going to pass debris. So we are looking at a higher flow rate, that higher flow rate of about 250 GPM. Well, we can achieve that flow rate with two-inch hose which is a lot lighter than um, two and a half inch hose, which is the hose normally used to achieve that same flow. So uh, to kind of illustrate this, we'll look at the hydraulics behind that. So we're gonna see some weird anomalies here. Not really weird anomalies, we're just using our tools in a different way. So first off, this is a tried and true high-rise package. Miami-Dade is using this, Miami's using this, Denver's using a very similar lord, uh, load. Um, established departments that regularly use high rider are using this exact same hose package in this, this exact same configuration. We, ex we conducted uh, extensive flow tests and found it to perform completely adequately. So looking at this hose line, we've got a two inch line. This is gonna be a, a 200 foot two inch line with an inch and one eighth smooth bore tip. Now the difference with this, because this is normally gonna be a 266 GPM line because we normally pump this at 50 PSI. But remember our standpipe is somewhat dictating our fire flow. So we wanna hit that target of about 250 GPM. So in order to do that, we put 45 pounds at the nozzle. We still get an effective fire stream um, and we still get uh, effective reach. We still get a great fire pattern uh, with really no sacrifice there. This also brings our nozzle reaction down quite a bit from 99 pounds, which would be the 266 GPM on our normal inch and eighth tip, down to 89 pounds, which is a 10 pound redu reduction, which is very substantial. Our friction loss at this flow is 30 PSI per section. So a 200 foot, um, a 200 foot line would be 105 PSI. And that's putting us right in our target there at that 100 PSI um, standpipe. So even if we were at the very top floor, most standpipes go a floor above uh, the last floor, so they go to the roof, right? So there's an additional five pounds of head pressure coming down on this, meaning that, that the, the furthest discharge that we're gonna hook to should have about 105 PSI right there. And of course, if we ever need to supplement that with the engine, then we can, but the idea is to let the fire pump do the work. So this hose package is designed to work with the standpipe and the fire pump to give us what we need. So when we're looking at the difference between a fog nozzle and a smoothbore nozzle, uh, we obviously have better gas cooling characteristics with a fog nozzle. Well, unfortunately on a standpipe, we can't use one because that's dictated by the standpipe. With the debris, we want that to be able to pass through. So remember, we still can gas cool with the smoothbore nozzle uh, by using our O pattern or our T pattern or whatever pattern we're using, hitting the walls, hitting the surfaces in the room, which is giving us our surface cooling that is creating smaller droplets of water, which is, which is also um, effective at gas cooling. Maybe not 100% as effective as a fog nozzle, but it's still very effective and we still are achieving those smaller droplets of water and achieving our task. Um, another thing I wanna talk about is uh, the TFT Vortex. Um, I don't have it with me, uh, we're currently getting them. What this is, is this is a stream straightener that goes in between the bale, so here's the bale, here's the bale handle, and here's the nozzle. The vortex sits right in between right here, and it's a stream straightener, and it has a characteristic where you turn 
the stream straightener and it turns the fins inside and gives you a simulated fog pattern and it's not like a fog pattern like we get out of our out of our automatic nozzles but it does widen your stream and what it's specifically designed to be used for is hydraulic ventilation uh, because without a fog nozzle in the bag we do lose that hydraulic ventilation um, capability so the details aren't quite worked out with whether all the bags are going to have the Vortex in it or only certain bags or whatnot, but it will be a piece of equipment that you see and use in there. It won't be our primary deployment model, it won't be on the hose, it won't be stored in this configuration because it's supposed to be used um, after post-fire as a ventilation tactic. It's something that can fit in your pocket and, and you know you just take it out of the hazard bag, put it in your pocket, you screw it on real quick and use it when you need it. So um, a challenge, if the fire pump, a, if there's, first off, if there's no fire pump, uh, which we have we're pretty limited in, in our district, which buildings don't have fire pumps. Or if the fire pump's not giving us the pressure we need for whatever reason, which is very unlikely. Uh, or the DO at the standpipe at the FDC um, is going to be supplementing that fire pump pressure. I just want, we talked about this uh, in the last October uh, major emphasis training. We had that simulated standpipe on the, um, on the burn building that we did this on. This is just kind of a refresher. So, Kind of the, the wild card in here is we don't really know what pressure this fire pump's going to fire at because it's designed to give us 100 psi at 500 gpm at the furthest discharge. So the lower down in the building we're going to get, the higher the pressure is going to be because we have this head pressure above our standpipe. So if we're you know five floor down, five floors down from the top, um, you know it's going to be 25 pounds higher than it would be at the very top. So where this might be 100, this might be 125. And if our target pressure, if we stretch our full 200 is 105, I'm just gonna be gating that down like we've talked about. So, and we'll show a video demonstration of what that looks like later. Uh, where the difficulty is gonna be is if I hook my pressure gauge up, say right here, and my target is 105 and I'm only getting 90 for whatever reason, I'm gonna have to call down to the DO to supplement this standpipe. So the DO will be hooked up here. They'll initially, or they will initially hook up with one three inch section and then charge it. And then once they get that charge and their water supply established, they'll hook up their next three inch section and then charge that. They're standing by at idle. Um, they're not supplying with any additional pressure unless they're asked to, because remember we want the fire pump to do the work. So this could be a communication struggle uh, amongst an already radio traffic heavy scene. Um, it would be a good idea for the forward DO here to call down to the standpipe DO and say, standpipe DO, can you switch to channel two for just a second and we'll get this figured out. This DO is gonna be charging the standpipe at idle and now they're supplementing this, this, uh, this standpipe system. The trick with this is, like I was saying, we don't know what pressure the fire pump's gonna be delivering here. And there's a clapper valve right here from the fire pump to the standpipe. So we're gonna have to overtake that clapper valve, but we don't know when that's going to happen because we don't know what the pressure is right here because we've got so much building above us and we've got all that head pressure. We know what our end discharge pressure should be, but we don't know what it's gonna be here. So it's gonna be a bit of a guessing game for this DO. One thing we can utilize is our flow meter. So if we hook up to a line with a flow meter, we, we will see that flow start as long as they're, they're flowing some water. Um, my recommendation as this DO would be to maybe set 150 PSI in your head as like a loose target, um, and then just slowly increase to that. And then this person, the forward DO, should be radioing and say, okay, I'm starting to see your pressure. Okay, I'm at 90, 95, I got my 105. Water the stairwell, test your pressure, everything's holding, okay, we're good. Shouldn't be a whole lot more than that, but like I said, it, it might not be a good idea to, to clog up our primary communication channel with all that traffic. So just kind of wrapping this whole segment up as we talk about our new package and our new high-rise deployment, from the DO standpoint, old school hydraulics are completely out the window. The 25 for the standpipe, accounting for elevation, you know, five per story, overcoming that, figuring out your GPM and your friction loss through your three inch, all of that is not existent anymore. The only thing that matters is the pressure that's on this pressure gauge on the fire floor. I figure out how much hose I've got going out. If I've got 100 feet of hose, that's gonna be a 75 PSI target. And the only thing that I need to account for is elevation above this gauge, not elevation in the total building. Because remember, by bringing this gauge here, we're basically moving our engine up here and we're just hooking our engine up right here. And so this is just our gauge on our engine. So we're, we're, we're now the forward DO. So all I have to do is account for elevation from my gauge onward. So if they're one floor above me, which there's a 99.9% .9 chance that's gonna be the case, and they run a line up there, a 100 foot line, 
then all I need to do is do 75 plus 5 for that story, and I'm putting this gauge right at 80. So when we talk about elevation now in high rise, remember it doesn't matter what floor we're on. Our engine is on the floor we're on and the hose line is coming off of the engine. So all we need to account for as the forward DO is the additional elevation from this gauge. All right, so like we talked about inside, I'm the DO. Now I'm ready to hook up and charge my standpipe. Um, as you can see, I've laid my one three inch line to the building um, and I'm gonna charge that one line first um, because I want to get water to the system and then once I have time I can charge the second line. So be thinking about that a little bit with how you approach the building and how you uh, position your engine, right? Because you're going to want to find your water supply, you're going to want to find your SDC, FDC, and um, you're going to want to be far enough away to be out of building collapse or falling debris or anything like that, but you might want to be close enough because it's going to be easier to pull that 3 inch than it will to be pulled more 5 inch. And uh, remember we might be a little resource limited with this. So I'm ready to pump this and if I ever get confused or it's been a while I can look at my chart right here. I see standpipes and sprinkler systems. I don't want to exceed 200 psi. I'm going to be charging this standpipe at idle. The attack crew will radio if increased pressure is needed. Line pressure is determined on the fire floor with the pressure gauge. If I've got a sprinkler system I'm going to just pump it at 150 psi um, and then I'm going to let my fire pump do the work if I can. All right, so now I'm operating as the forward DO at the standpipe. I've got my pressure gauge hooked up. I have a 45 for a nice straight shot of hose up the, uh, up the stairwell here. And um, I'm gonna be charging this. And remember, it's just like you're bringing your fire engine to this standpipe. I'm operating as a DO. What I don't have control over here is an increase of pressure with the throttle. So everything I'm gonna be controlling here is with this valve. So remember, if the standpipe, I'm sorry, if the fire pump isn't giving me enough pressure, I'm gonna have to call down uh, to the standpipe DO and say, hey, increase the pressure for me. But luckily, you know, hopefully my, uh, my fire pump will do the work for me. So um, I really don't know what pressure I've got at this standpipe until I charge this gauge. Um, you know, I, don't, I might have 10 floors above me or you know, five floors above me or whatever, which is gonna increase head pressure. And remember, we're gonna get that 100 PSI at either 500 or 250 GPM, depending on the standpipe, at our furthest discharge, but I'm gonna have all that head pressure on top of me. So if I'm on a lower floor, I could have quite a bit of pressure here, and I'm just not gonna know until I open the gauge. So let's go ahead and open up the gauge and see what we got here. All right, so I'm charging my line. All right, so as you can see, I'm at 160 PSI here, which is obviously way too much. Remember this gauge is marked, and this gauge isn't marked exactly how the gauges are gonna be marked, but it's pretty close. I've got 100 feet of hose out, so I just look at my 100 foot mark, and that's my target. But like I said, I've got a static pressure right now, so it's not until I water the grass, or in this case, water the stairwell, that I'm gonna be able to set my pressure. Go ahead and open the line. So when he opens the line, I'm gonna see that gauge go way down. Now he's flowing. Now I can get back and set my pressure. So the line's flowing. I'm getting back. Remember, I've got 100 feet of hose. I'm at my pressure. Okay, stop. Stop flowing. And look, when he stops, it's going to spike again. And there we are seeing that static pressure, right? So I have to trust that just like I'd have to trust it up my engine. So when he opens the line again, go ahead and open it. It should just come right back down to that 100 foot mark. And that's my job as the forward DO. Go ahead and shut it. So now I'm pretty much married to this gauge. Um, I'm going to stay in this gauge and I want to monitor it during operations. And I can stand here and help pump hose a little bit, but I'm going to periodically want to make sure that this gauge is doing what it's, what it's supposed to do. One critical thing to remember is that they're, five, they're a story above me, and so I have to give them a little bit extra pressure, um, 5 PSI per story.